I think of Switzerland, mountains, great chocolate, luxury watches, but also innovation. Uh, Switzerland consistently leads rankings in the Global Innovation Index, uh, and that's captured, I think, with uh, with our guests uh, for this next session at Centre Court. Uh, IMD, of course, is one of the world's leading business schools. Uh, its leadership focus is, is legendary. But also uh, in the field of innovation, uh, Peter Holt Tyson, who just graduated from the school as the class of 22, is a great example. He started after his undergrad at Copenhagen Business School with Unilever before co founding an e com startup, and then had three years in Dublin with Google, going from digital strategist to a leading commercial growth project for Northern Europe. Um, all of that meant with his international. Uh, background uh, that his friends made the most of his uh, apartment in Copenhagen, but he's back now having graduated. During his time, he was the recipient of IMD's Young Leaders Scholarship and various other merit scholarships and was the president of the IMD Ecosystem Club. He's uh, now joined a West Coast software firm Stealth. And joining him, uh, a friend of Centre Court, uh, Omar Tulan. Omar is the Dean uh, of the MBA program, also a professor of strategy at the school with, again, an extraordinarily accomplished background that takes in um, the Walsh School at Georgetown and his PhD at the MIT Sloan. He worked at the White House and several years at McKinsey, but really has made uh, IMD his home. Thank you, both of you, for joining us at uh, Centre Court. Uh, Omar, uh, of course, uh, IMD has become such a part of your life. Mm -hmm. I can only begin to hint at such a wonderful institution. T tell me a little bit about IMD, its values, its mission. I mentioned leadership, but it's so much more. Yeah, I mean, IMD is, is I have to say, is, is a very unique place. I've, I've spent much of my career at, at other universities. And when I moved here six years ago, I mean, IMD is really about developing leaders. Uh, and I think this gets transposed into our MBA program. Uh, our goal is really to develop reflective and responsible leaders who can have an impact not only on their own organizations, but also on society as a whole. Uh, and we do that by helping them define challenges, critically assess them, uh, collaborate, and eventually through all of that, hopefully have impact uh, on whatever the, the, the target is. Uh, but IMD, like I say, is, is, is a very unique place. Uh, we're located in uh, Lausanne, Switzerland, uh, just at the base of the Alps, probably 30 minutes from Geneva. Um, our class size is roughly 90 to 120 students. Uh, and uh, we have an intake every January uh, into the program. And, uh, you know, I, I was very proud to, to join the program and, and take over as, as the Dean of the MBA, <clears throat> building upon, you know, the accomplishments of my predecessors. Uh, we had the fortune of, of being ranked first in Bloomberg for the last four years for uh, European MBAs and also first in, in Forbes for uh, international one-year MBAs. Uh, but uh, AMD really is a unique place. We're a boutique program, uh, but uh, one where, uh, like I say, leadership is front and center. Right. You mentioned the st stunning location uh, on, on, on the lake. It, it's one of the best views of any business school I've enjoyed visiting. But also with that Swiss uh, heritage, tremendous corporate ties reflected recently. You recently announced the new uh, Hilti uh, MBA mm -hmm. scholarships, which is what a pledge of 3 million Swiss francs, which will support 60 uh, MBA scholars over the next 10 years. But those corporate tri ties really do feed into the IMD experience. Exactly. I think, you know, one of the advantages IMD has is we have a very large executive education component of the school. And through leveraging those corporate ties, we're able to bring real learning into the MBA classroom as well. Many of my guest speakers, many of our, our, our recruiters are also uh, companies that, that come to IMD for education, for training. Uh, and so those corporate ties, as you mentioned, you know, the most recent example is, is the 3 million franc donation by uh, the Hilti Corporation to sponsor 60 scholarships over the next 10 years. Um, and so uh, that is definitely, I think, one of the core uh, advantages of, of, uh, of IMD. Right. You mentioned boutique because, of course, the ratio of students to faculty gives so much individual attention. But even on the career side, you have psychologists even that do individual sessions with students. I mean, that's a lot of care you're taking for this leadership journey. Yes. I mean, I am, like I say, given the, the, the size of the program and we have roughly 60 faculty, uh, even if we're at 120 students, that's still a faculty student ratio of two to one. 
Um, so as you say, there is a lot of personalized attention. Uh, even the office, we have almost 20 people in the office to take care of uh, 100, 120 students. Um, that attention, like you say, extends to the, the career aspect. And also, I would say even before that, to really helping people understand you know, what is it that makes them tick? Uh, they have uh, access to what we call, aside from their leadership coach, uh, they have access to uh, psychotherapists to basically uh, really delve into, you know, what makes you tick? What is it you want to achieve out of life? Uh, how does that fit with your career goals? Um, and I think that's one of the unique aspects of the program and, and reflects the leadership focus, which, you know, the leadership uh Part of the program starts the very first week and ends the very last week of the program. So it really is the thread that extends through through the entire year. Um, and uh, like I say, that personalized approach, I think, is, is one of the things which uh, is, we're, we're, we're most known for. Peter, you are enjoying a very successful career with Google in Dublin and already taking on a leadership responsibility. So the idea to go back to business school, tell us a little bit about that thought process and, of course, how you chose IMD, the sort of considerations that you were looking at. Yes, yes, definitely, man. I think I think what, what Omar hints towards is, is very much true. I think well, what I was looking for was really an exploratory adventure in, in every sense, both both externally in the environment that you put in, but also internally too. So I think it was more like a, a transformative experience where with the MBA skills weren't just, you know, knowledge for business, but it was also about, you know, it was being set into perspective the current economic, the social, the environmental situation to kind of challenge your own beliefs and values. So I think my motivation for IMD for choosing that was, was focused on the leadership part, um, as Mar hinted too, like the, the whole inward focus too, um, when you say, okay, now you put yourself in, in like a, in a digital world, entrepreneurship world, strong economic outlook that IMD gives. Um, but if you want to make a difference in that world, then how do you look a bit inwards and figure out, you know, how do you execute? Who are you and wh where do you come from? Um, and I think in that context, like the IMD MBA program for me was a game changer for that. Um, and then they put you in the situation where you work with an early stage startup too, to figure out operationally, like how do you work? And also in a seven week consulting project, we help them with national companies. So you're kind of, you're kind of having this, this basis of, of knowing yourself and then you're being put into different environments you, where you figure out operationally, how do you do that? Um, so I think in that way, the, the MBA for me had like a real world, world foundation, um, but with a highly inward focus on self-development that I found incredibly interesting. As, as Omar describes from week one to, to the final week of the program, you know, you pack in an extraordinary amount of, of, of content courses uh, in the IMD program, uh, but also the introspection. Now, with that focus on leadership, Peter, uh, and, and you talk about a, a personal journey, can you teach leadership? What, what has it meant to you over the last 12 months? I think, I think what, it, what it took away was that um, a really particular thing. I, like one of my personal beliefs is that you can, you can basically learn most academic things because the cost of you know, learning has gone down so rapidly with the internet. But what's really gonna, what's really gonna hold you back like progressing in the future if you wanna be bold is, is yourself. So that inward focus um, and that self-awareness to, to strengthen your self-confidence, that's where, that's where real leadership acts actually taught. Right. How do, how do you then juggle priorities? Because classes, clubs, you know, there's more than you could possibly fit into the 12 months. How, how do you make those choices? <laughs> oh, that's a very good question. It's... Um... I think, I think there's a, it's a progression during the year where you, you learn a lot, a lot about yourself and your own priorities and also others. Um, so, so imagine that you, you come into a class where you're, you're around 90, 100 students from 40 different places. And you're basically wearing 40 different like, backpacks of cultural things, of like, anything from where you come from. Um, and, and, and the more you get to learn a bit about yourself, the more you also get to learn a bit about others and how, how you contrast with others too. And you get to learn a bit about others' priorities and how you actually do that. Um, when you're in group settings, you have different priorities, different deadlines. Um, so I think it's very much focused on, you know, how do you stack and prioritize both for yourself, for the group, for others. Um, and that's something where you, you wouldn't necessarily be able to learn that like in such a short amount of time other places. You were the president of the IMD uh, Ecosystem Club. How do these different clubs and groups contribute perhaps to either industry understanding or just you know, bringing great minds together? 
uh, and thinking through some of the the societal and economic challenges that Omar described? Yeah, that's a lovely question. Um, so, so these clubs actually formed themselves. Um, so. Uh, with the students. Um, I was heading the, the, the startup in BC entrepreneurship club. Um, and, and we basically have speakers in from anything from, from pre-seed stage to, to, to unicorn companies and alumni. Um, and, and they're all focused on, you know, people who found this industry or, or this specific topic interesting. Um, who can we bring in? Who do we know? Who is there from alumni? Who is there from previous um, jobs and careers that you've had? To kind of explore a little, little bit about, you know, where do I want to go in the future? Um, so the different events being held, um, and, and what's fun about this is that these relationships are not just, you know, um, something that you benefit from during the year, but after the year too. So, so now I have a fellow Japanese colleague who's, um, who's joined a, a prop tech startup in, in the Bay Area in the US. I have a fellow Belgian classmate who's joined a Web3 startup in Paris, and I've joined an AI startup. Um, to, and we still talk, like we still keep in touch pretty often, actually. <laughs> um, so it's it's something that's just, it's it's not just during the year, but it's ongoing afterwards as well. Um, right. And oh, we also have, so we have this health tech startup that came out of class too, who received mm -hmm. the, the IMD startup brand of 100K Swiss francs, who is now building that after the MBA. So I think there's a lot of things doing the IMD MBA that sets you up for, for success going forward too. Now, if the two of us, Omar, just sat in deck chairs enjoying that view of the, yeah. the springtime <laughs> sunshine and the lake, but if we walked through the corridors and the sort of you know, dynamic uh, events and activities that are taking place, what, 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 what would you say, well, you know, this is what I love about IMD, th th these are the key differentiators, what, what, what yeah. would you identify? Well, I think, you know, part of, I think Peter's... Um already been referring to, but the experiential nature of the program. Uh, you know, this is a program where you do not only learn in the classroom, uh, but you go out, you, you apply it in real world situations, whether it's the international consulting project, whether it's the startup project. Uh, I mean, last week we had the entire class up in the Alps for three days talking about the sustainability agenda. Uh, next week, they go to the mountains again to talk, uh, to basically start their leadership lab. Uh, we have, you know, four discovery trips to four different continents in the world. We have the innovation lab, the digital week, uh, all of these together make learning experiential. And I think that's really core to IMD's uh, beliefs and also to, to the program. Uh, and combined, like you said, with the, the leadership focus, with, with the personalized focus of the program, I think these three are uh, elements, I would say, are the three pillars of the program. One of the other key areas is entrepreneurship, uh, which as Peter just referred to, you know, we, we uh, have not only the entrepreneurship course and the startup projects, but last year we also launched what's called the IMD Venture Award, which is 100,000 francs donated by one of our alums from, from, who lives in the Bay Area uh, and has sold several uh, successful startups. Uh, and its goal is really to promote uh, uh, students being able to start businesses right out of school. Uh, and so this 100,000, uh, the students have to do a pitch, they have to uh, present in front of uh, venture capitalists, and then the winner will receive 100,000 francs, plus mentorship, plus uh, things such as office space and additional benefits to help them kick off their business once they graduate. Uh, so I think that combined with the other elements of the program really strengthen our, our focus on entrepreneurship. And secondly, I would say also sustainability. You know, we did a major redesign of the program uh, last year, uh, or last year it was implemented. Uh, and it's really focused on trying to define what are the key skills and sustainability that all managers will need to know in the future. So not trying to make this the green MBA, it's, it's really what will all managers need to know. So we did an assessment of those key skills, talking internally, externally. We also talked to recruiters to identify a list of 10 skills and then went course by course to figure out where do we need to in, in, in instill this and also added new elements such as the mountain experience as well as a mock COP27 uh, event that we hold at the UN uh, to really infuse sustainability in a much stronger way into the program. So again, going back to the three core pillars of leadership, experiential and personalized, complemented, I'd say, by entrepreneurship uh, and sustainability. Over the last six years, you know, every year, Omar, you're, you're reminded of the transformational experience of, of, of the MBA, uh, but also its relevance, whether it's in it fields of sustainability and, and more broadly. Um, but a young professional like Peter, enjoying a great career, to, to then give all of that up and come to business school for a year, 
how, yeah. how do you then advise uh, an individual thinking about their own areas of interest, their passions, their career aspirations, and finding the right program and making that investment? Yeah, no, I would say, you know, the first thing one always has to do is think of, of the MBA as potentially a trump card, a card you can use once to realign your career. Once you've used it, you can't use it again. So I think timing is also fundamental and key. Uh, and to think, you know, are you ready to, to make a change? Be it, it doesn't mean you have to change everything. You're not, you don't have to, we have some what we call triple changers who are people who change uh, country, uh, uh, industry, as well as function. Uh, but are you ready for uh, uh, a change? I think is the first thing you have to understand. And then you have to do your research. Uh, I think, you know, people need to understand that programs are very different. They have different things to offer. As I said, IMD, we really do focus on, on the leadership aspect of, of, uh, of an MBA. Other programs focus on different elements. Uh, I think you need to talk to alumni. Uh, they will be the best sources of information. Uh, potentially talk to people who know the school, be it in the recruiter format uh, or, or others, but do your research. Uh, it really is fundamental. And, and then when you do make that decision to actually take the leap and, and go to do an MBA program, make sure you do it with an open mind, right? You have to have, as, as one of our former students said, a mindset to learn, right? If you arrive here closed-minded or, or just focusing on what you were doing in the past, you will, you will miss the experience. Uh, and uh, uh, like I say, it is an opportunity for self-reflection, for really transforming not just your career, but yourself. So uh, I encourage people to, to uh, do their research and, and take it seriously. I'm sure, Peter, that the year almost finished before you knew it, you had fitting so much in. As you reflect on the 12 months, but even you know, as we look ahead to the future, th things that you'll remember, perhaps something unexpected, you know, what, what's had the greatest impact? Yeah, I'm going to be really honest here. And, uh, and, uh, and there's, there's a lot of things that I can, I can put as hallmarks during that year, and it went by incredibly fast. Um, I think... Um, I think I think there are three different things uh, that really like nailed it down for me. Um, and one was um, everyday scenery. Like you're located just gorgeously next to Lac Le Mans, like with the view towards the mountains, and and being in that scenery with so many fantastic people on an everyday basis, it 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 just it's it's gone by way too quickly. Um, and you really want to you want to make the most out of that year. Um, um, secondly, I think the two discovery trips, and and here I could I could put so I was in Silicon Valley and I was in in, in Buenos Aires as well, and I think being an entrepreneurship guy, I would probably you would, you would think I would put you know me finding myself chatting next to the co-founder of YouTube in Silicon Valley at a casual backyard garden, um, but I would actually put being in Buenos Aires instead, because coming from a very stable country as Denmark and and seeing how Argentinians you know handle immense volatility, that was incredible for me. Um, the, the, the flexibility in a mindset like that is so inspiring. And then the ex like experiencing that um, is, is fantastic. Um, and then I think the, the, the third thing would be the, the integrative exercise um, by the end of module one, which basically blends together all of your courses from, from a module into one exercise. Um, but I think that's for, that's for future students to figure out what that's all about. <laughs> that's the that's the teaser. So perhaps your final uh, piece of advice, Peter, to uh, our audience, you know, they're thinking about an MBA, uh, taking this step, making this investment uh, in themselves. What, what, what would you say? How would you encourage them? So so this is this is an advice that I got from from an old friend, um, which I feel still find valid after actually doing the MBA. And it's that this is this is your MBA. It's not an MBA for some stamp of approval. Um, it's not an MBA because other people think you should do one. It's your MBA. And I think you should really figure out what you want out of that time that you're ripping out of your calendar, of your career to focus on yourself. So I think you should choose your school based on that. Like, what do you want to get out of it? Um, and I think from, from, for me personally, what, what took me away was that, like, the earlier you start to get to know yourself, and to really enhance your self-awareness for your own leadership, the, the, the more time you actually have to progress in that leadership to, to make bold moves and, and to challenge, challenge what is and, and inspire what could be. And that's really why I chose IMD in the end.
Mm. It's fascinating. Uh, Omar had spoken of uh, IMD that tops the rankings of Bloomberg, Forbes that looks at uh, a monetary ROI. But what you're identifying is something far more personal and, and how that will continue, I'm sure, to, to reward you for the years to come. So, uh, Omar, not only that ratio of uh, students mm -hmm. to faculty, but with the staff, an incredibly um, hardworking, very welcoming team. So our viewers wanting to get in touch with the mm -hmm. school, uh, good ways of reaching out, talking to alumni like Peter, what would you recommend? Yeah, excellent. I mean, I think, you know, obviously, you know, feel free to, to contact uh, our office. I mean, you can either log on to the website at uh, imd.org or simply send an email to mbainfo at imd.org uh, and the team will, will be quick to, uh, uh, to reach out to you. Um, it's, uh, like I say, I'm very lucky to have a very uh, uh, amazing team, uh, both on the admission side, placement, as well as uh, uh, on the program office itself. So don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, we'll be happy to talk to all of you. Yeah, I can only concur with uh, it, it is a wonderful team. Great students. Uh, Peter, it was lovely to have you with us. Uh, Omar, it's always a pleasure uh, when you join these Centre Court events and for our viewers. Uh, get in touch with the school. Uh, it's a, a life-changing experience that I don't think you'll regret. Thank you to both of you. Thank you very much, Matt. Thank you, Matt. Cheers.